Hi, Chris Glynn here with the Nightlight Podcast. Nice to be with you again. My guest on the program today is a lifelong French-Canadian missionary and Bible teacher and host of the End Time Ready website and YouTube channel. His name is Gaetan, and he's speaking to us from Montreal in Canada. Nightlight's interview of the week. Welcome to Nightlight, Gaetan. It's always a pleasure to have newcomers on the show. What topic have you chosen to share with us today? It's nice to be with you, Chris. Thank you for the invitation. What I want to do is explore the many words of praise that are contained in the prophecy of the book of Revelation. We're going to look at the book of Revelation through the lens of praise and victory. Cool. What comes to mind for most people when they think about the book of Revelation, it's a book of dragon and beast and tribulation and plagues and Armageddon and so on. Right. But we not going to approach it this way because within the book of revelation there's several portion of chapter that are praise so we're gonna go through the book of revelation this way super the incredible throne scenes that john describes in the book of revelation are among my favorite parts of the bible and i'm very excited to read those for our listeners today and to hear what you have to say about them nightlight insights Let's begin by reading a few verses from Revelation 1, verse 1 to 3. Would you like to read it? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So I thought it was important to include that part of chapter 1, because in many Bible, you know, it says the revelation of John the Divine, but actually it's God that gave it to Jesus, that gave it to his angel, that gave it to John, and then he passed it on to us. So That's right. It's really Jesus speaking. The other things that I always like is bless is he that read. Because when we talk about the book of Revelation, a lot of people, they say, I haven't read it because it scares me. Yes. Oh, I don't understand. It's hard to understand. But this is not what the Lord says here. He says, bless. He doesn't say, frighten are you if you read it. It says, bless if you read and they that hear that prophecy. So if the Lord give it to us, it's stand to reason that we can understand it. Yes, that's right. We don't understand everything, of course, but there's a lot that we can understand. And what I don't understand, I know that eventually, or those that are going to live those days, they're going to understand when it starts happening. Signs of the Times. So let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So from chapter one, we know about that that voice as a trumpet, it's Jesus. It's interesting, it says, come iter. It's Jesus that's talking to John, he says, come up. But some scholar, they actually have interpreted that verse as being the resurrection or the rapture of the church, but it isn't. This is not the seventh trumpet of tribulation. It's simply Jesus saying to John, not to the whole church, but to John, come up and I'll show you things that must be hereafter. That's right. And it says here, immediately I was in the spirit and behold the throne. So it looks like the Lord is taking John in the spirit trip to the spirit world. He's invited at the heavenly throne. At least we can say that John saw a vision of the throne in heaven. Yes. This is the setup of what's coming with the praise. In this same chapter, would you like to read verse 6 and 8 to 11? And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, 
full of eyes before and behind. And the four beasts had, each of them, six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So let's see that setup. Let's imagine that setup. We are in that tremendous heavenly throne scene and the main actor of four beasts or four living creatures and the 24 elders we don't know exactly who they are and we don't totally understand who those four beasts are and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth for ever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created <laughs> In some Bibles, beasts are translated as living creatures, right? They're not sort of beasts like wild animals. So because we think uh, there's only uh, man and animals, but the Lord in, in the spirit or in heaven, he, he's got to have some other kind of creature. He does. In any case, uh, the four living creatures, the 24 elders, and, and then we're going to see the letter a multitude of angels. And it appears that the main desire of those people there in heaven is to be continually they praising God, they giving him glory, honor, thanks. And while we reading or hearing those praise, a bunch of detail comes out like it's talking about God being eternal. He says, who was and is and is to come. And it is to come, it's like preparing us for the second coming, because the Lord is coming. That's right. It's also say, you created all things, so they're praising God because He's the Creator. And then also the word worthy, you are worthy. This comes back a lot. And we're going to find out in the next chapter why the Lord is worthy. So, would you like to go on to Revelation 5, verse 9 to 10? And they sung a new song, saying... Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Wow. Maybe a little explanation about that scroll book, because it, a little bit before those verses, it talks about John saw a book, a scroll, because in those ancient days, the books were not like book like today, they were like scroll. That's right. And important books that were to be given to official or king, they had seals, and only the people that were supposed to read it were supposed to break the seal, but John is in heaven and it looks like nobody is found worthy to open that scroll that has seven seal. And But then now we find out who is worthy. It says the Lord is worthy. And why? Because you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. So it's talking about salvation. The Lord was the only one that was able to do that because he died for us. Amen. And then amidst those praises we find out that he, the Lord Jesus, has made us king and priest to our God, and we shall reign on earth. So that's an introduction to the period of the millennium, a thousand years of peace that will come after the battle of Armageddon, uh, after his, his second coming. I don't have to uh, convince anybody that the world is in a big mess right now, and the people that run the world are pretty big messer. Amazingly, here we told that the Lord will use us, His church, or His body of believer, His people, to strengthen things out in the millennium. Praise God. Because He says He's made us king and priest to our God. So it makes us think that we, the believers, we are in our training right now. Because one day we're going to reign with Christ. It's pretty amazing. It's kind of hard for me to imagine that I will be one of those king and priests. But that's, that's what the scripture says. That's right. We'll be the government then. Yes. 
and hopefully we'll do a bit better. Well, we'll have the Lord, we'll have the Holy Spirit. We got to do better because the world right now is not a very nice place. Shining bright through the dark night. You're listening to Nightlight. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 12. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Wow, uh, 10,000 times 10,000, that's a hundred million, right? And then there's millions more on top of that. Yes, it's like an undefined number. It says it's the largest single number used in the Greek language. So I think at the time, John didn't have any other word. <laughs> so it's billions. So it's like a, a big crowd there around the throne. If you can imagine it, it's a super scene. And again, the word worthy is the lamb, it comes. The Lord is worthy and he's being praised. Let's read verse 13 and 14 of that same chapter. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Wow. It says, Every creature which is in heaven, on the earth, under the earth and also in the sea. So that covers just about everybody. <laughs> Gaetan, who do you think the creatures are that are under the earth? That's interesting. Well, I'm not sure if I can give you an answer. All I know is uh, when Jesus, after his death, he spent three days in the middle of the earth and he went to preach to the spirit that were in prison there, some kind of purgatory. Purgatory, yes. We cannot be sure, but here it says under the earth. So I would say something similar to that. Yes, I think so. Every creature alive or dead or judged or about to be judged will praise God. And there's a verse that talks about every knee shall bow before him. Would you like to read Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So here the Apostle Paul says something kind of similar. Every knee one day eventually will bow to the Lord. Thank God. Let's continue with the Revelation 7, verse 9 to 12. So what are we doing right now? We're going through all the portion of chapter that has praises. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. Wow, so this is a hundred million and millions more angels, plus a great multitude from every nation in the world, in unison shouting salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Wow, 
that's going to be a mighty shout. Yeah, it's hard to imagine all those people. That great multitude, we're not going to read verse 13 and 14, but it says that there's an angel that asks John, who's that multitude? He says, well, you know. And the angel says, they are the save that went through the great tribulation. Even though the great tribulation at that point in chapter 7 has not happened yet, because in Revelation chapter 8, the seven trumpet of tribulation start. But in the spirit, there is not time some of those people in that great tribulation are those that went through the great tribulation. Right, and it's important for people to understand that the events described in the book of Revelation are not all in consecutive order, but some chapters go back and add more details of events that are described in earlier chapters. Exactly, uh, Chris. The book of Revelation is progressing all the time, but it has flashback so it's not exactly uh, chronological it's important to know that because in order to understand the book of revelation it's not exactly chronological because it goes back several times it's just like a movie it makes us understand it more but right here there's seven things that the angels say that belongs to god blessing glory wisdom thanksgiving honor power and might be to our god forever and ever. So, they keep on praising God. Nightlight. What a delight! Let's go on to Revelation chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Wow. Those that had gotten the victory over the beast. Right now, in Revelation 5, those seven angels are about to be pouring out the wrath of God. John, he saw those tribulation saints in heaven, but just before the wrath. Because we, the body of believer, we're going to go through the tribulation, but we're not appointed to wrath. So that verse, it's another indication about that. Gaetan, I think a lot of people get the judgments that are heralded by the tribulation trumpets, which are described in Revelation chapters 8 and 9, mixed up with the judgments of the vials of the wrath of God, which are described in chapter 16. The wrath of God happens after the rapture of the church, but the church is here on earth for the great tribulation. Yes, it's, it's an important point. Here it says those that have the victory over the beast. That means the believer are going to be under the persecution of the beast. And the beast is the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Beast. So the, the church will be there during the tribulation. And it's important. And it's an important point because so many people believe in the pre-tribulation. They're going to get a big surprise. They're not going to be ready and prepare mentally, spiritually for that. Yes. So they, they, they're going to find themselves in the tribulation and say, wow, what happened? The things that I believe all my life wasn't true. Or That's right. It's good to be prepared this way. Because if we look at world history, China, Russia, or the persecution in Rome, the people of God have gone through tribulation all the time. The Lord allowed them to go through tribulation. And it's going to be the same thing for the last great tribulation. That's right. Here, an interesting thing, it talks about the Song of Moses. What is that Song of Moses? We find it in the book of Exodus, chapter 15. Would you like to read Exodus 15? We're not going to read the whole song, but verse 1 and 2. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, 
I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. So this is Moses in uh, Exodus chapter 15. Uh, Moses sung that song of victory. Uh, when God delivered him and the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt, when the, the Lord miraculously part the Red Sea and, and then destroyed the army of Pharaoh that were pursuing them. So you can imagine the, <laughs> the children of Israel and Moses, they were very thankful. They sang that song, which is called the, the Song of Moses. So that's in Exodus chapter 15. Now we go to Revelation chapter 15, and we have something quite similar, because the Lord, at that point of Revelation, He just got His people out of the Great Tribulation in the rapture. And we find those people that have just been raptured, they are in heaven, and they're praising God also, because God has rescued them from the modern Pharaoh, which is the Antichrist. So that's kind of similar. There's a little different. It's, it's the song of Moses that they sing and the song of the Lamb, Jesus. So that's quite amazing. History, in, in a way, repeats itself, but now in the book of Revelation. Nightlight, keeping you in tune with the times. Shall we go to the next chapter, Revelation 16, verse 5 to 7? And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, True and righteous are thy judgments. So here we see the, the judgment of the Lord. It's a little bit gory. And, and you know, some people have a hard time to believe in a God that would be pouring out his judgment this way. But we thank God for his grace that save us. And we have a God that is love, loving, patient. He's not willing that even one should perish. But there is a time for judgment and retribution. Amen. And God will judge the wicked or will judge the, these people that have, for example, in the tribulation, the beast and his followers that are persecuting the church, the believer. There's going to be a time they're going to be judged. So true and righteous are your judgment are the word of praise here. We reap what we sow. We reap heaven, but some reap the other place. Uh, if we just look at the evil of today... It's so bad. Uh, you know, it's like a movie. We see a movie and we see a lot of bad people killing other people. And all of a sudden they get arrested or they get wiped out. We kind of, not that we're happy, but it's fair. The people that are evil reap what they've sown eventually. Amen. But the key words are here, true and righteous are your judgment. Let's go to the last chapter, uh, Revelation 19, verse 1 to 4. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Alleluia. So it seemed like everybody's shouting Alleluia. It's like that famous Alleluia chorus from Andal Messiah, which is quite yeah. powerful. Very powerful. And uh, if we are in heaven around that time, I think we all, we're also going to be shouting Alleluia. 
What's happening at that time in Revelation 19 is that the wicked Babylon is destroyed and God is raining his judgment on the earth. And Babylon, which represents the worldwide commercial religious system that also kill the Lord's prophet, his servant. So that entity, Babylon, is being judged. Now, an interesting fact is that the word Alleluia, which means, Alleluia means praise God, is used only four times in the New Testament. Only four times? Really? Yeah, only four times in this chapter of 19. It is used 24 times in the Old Testament, in the Psalm. And uh, some are calling uh, those passages in Psalm, they call the Alleluia Psalm. But isn't it amazing that only four times in the New Testament? I never knew that. I didn't know that too. Should we continue with verse 5 to 7? And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Talking about the word Alleluia, that only comes four times, but the, the expression to praise God comes many times. It's just that the exact word of Alleluia only four times. Right. So, right now, for the Lord God, omnipotent reign, Alleluia. So, who's taking over? Who's going to reign? Now, God is going to reign. And so here they are praising God, thanking God. It's a great victory over the enemy because the tribulation saints uh, have been released with the rapture and they've been rescued all the, out of this hell on earth, this hell of the beasts and his followers. And now, Revelation 19, they are in heaven and they're having what it's called a wonderful party, what it's called uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb or the wedding reception. It's a wonderful time of rejoicing. See, the Lord is like a husband, and the body of a believer is like his bride. We are like the bride, and the Lord is the husband. That's right. And we're having our wedding reception. We're having our wedding feast at that time. Right. We're already married to the Lord spiritually when he comes into us, into our hearts, and we're born again. But this is like the grand wedding reception where we actually meet Jesus face to face. And just to be clear, this is not just the tribulation saints that are there, but this is the multitude of believers of all generations, right? And this is the church. This is the Lamb's spiritual bride. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's going to be a big party, a big wedding, because it's all the believers from the beginning are going to be there. Talk about a big party. That's going to be the party of party. And they all going to be shouting hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nightlight. You're listening to an international edition of Nightlight, shining God's love light to the world. Well, in conclusion, the book of Revelation deals with the final days, terrible days, when uh, men will worship the beast, the Antichrist, or they worship his image. There's going to be days of tribulation for the believers. But also, it shows people in heaven who sing and praise God. Revelation showed that only the Lord, our Creator, our Savior, our Judge, He's the one that is worthy of our devotion and praise. This is a good sample for us to follow as we can be prone to fear, discouragement. Even though today's world is upside down, the daily news is kind of depressing. I kind of follow the news because it's like food and uh, we got to be watch out what our spiritual food is for our mind and our spirit. This is why it's important that we believers and everyone to use our spiritual weapon of praise, putting all our fear, worries in the Lord's hand and uh, taking time to love and worship the Lord with praises. The book of Revelation is a good sample for us because in the midst of all those problems, <laughs> almost half the book of Revelation is about praising God. So, Chris, I wanted to uh, show this angle 
a revelation that is not always talked about, about just praising God. How uh, important it is, our uh, praises to God. Thank you so much, Gaetan. That was truly awesome and inspiring. Wow, we have so much to look forward to. Just thank you for inviting me, and God bless you, and keep passing on the word, especially in the distressing world we live in. It is distress. That's why praises are so important. The links to Gaetan's website and YouTube channel are below. Also, my reading of the full book of Revelation, which is right here on this YouTube channel, and I'll also put the link to that below. God bless you. This is Chris Glynn signing out and looking forward to being back with you again very soon for another international Nightlight podcast. Bye for now.